This case could possibly go deeper than we think, and it's most likely tied in with a case of Magdalena Zhuk and the human trafficking group that is getting covered by the Polish Prosecution's Office. This is the story of Karolina Kaczorowska. This story begins in January 2016. Karolina has had a great and a successful career as a model. She's signed a new contract, she's in the process of buying a new house, and she's importing a new Mercedes that she bought from the USA. She also at the time had a wealthy partner in the UK, uh, who later on said that he was actually her fiancé. And as you can see, her life is going quite great for her. Um, she's got the money, she's got the fame from being the model. Um, and this is kind of where all, all starts to go downhill. On the 16th of January, uh, Carolina throws down a party for her as it's her birthday. She invites her friends over to the Mercure Hotel. And after they all meet together, she kind of decides to stay in for the weekend in the hotel. Um, she decides to stay with her ex, uh, Camille P. However, on the evening of the Saturday, um, they end up having an argument and Camille leaves at 10.45 p.m most likely due to the argument that they had. About an hour later, Carolina leaves to walk her dog. However, after a few minutes, she returns back to the hotel, kind of looks like she forgot something. She goes back into her room and she never leaves that room ever again. So about 30 minutes past midnight, the neighbors uh, start to complain that there is a dog barking and it won't stop. 15 minutes later, the security guard comes over to check what's happening. Uh, he can't hear the dog anymore, so he just uh, decides to leave. Uh, and now the cameras at this uh, hotel, they get turned off at night um, and they don't come back on until the next morning. Which is interesting, you would think that in a hotel um, you would have 24-hour CCTV cameras, but I guess not in this hotel. To 1.45 p.m. the next day, the cleaners go inside Carolina's room um, and they find her uh, hanged by a wire in her bathroom. The police, the prosecution's office and a doctor are immediately called to the scene. Do the doctor says that someone else had to be involved uh, in this situation. However, the prosecutor's office um, declares it as a suicide. Uh, keep in mind, this is the same prosecution's office that we talked about uh, in the last video with Magdalena Zhuk. Keep this in mind when we get to the theories. And now this case gets kind of left like this for a few weeks um, until private detectives actually take this case on by themselves. And the detectives find out that the lady which was leading the investigation from the prosecution's office, they find out that she mishandled the evidence and there's been clues left um, in the room that haven't been checked properly and they basically said she didn't do her job properly. They said that no fingerprints were taken from the room, no DNA was taken from the cigarettes, the cups, um, and there were substances on the towels w which weren't checked um, either. Another thing that was kind of pointed out by the detectives is that the wire from the hair straightener that Carolina used to basically hang herself um, was basically lost by the prosecution's office. Um, the lady that was leading uh, the investigation from the prosecution's office uh, thought it would be a good idea to give it to the burial house, which was then, which then they were supposed to give it to the family. Um, so the wire wasn't secured, it wasn't checked, it was just given to the burial house. I don't know why they would do this. I don't know why they just. They didn't use this essential piece of evidence um, and they got just basically lost in the process. I don't see why the family would want to see the wire before it was checked by the police and um, investigators. Uh, I don't know. And kind of the negligence doesn't stop there. Um, they totally didn't look into the situation that she was wearing a full ski suit when, they were, when she was found. Um, she was also under the influence of drugs and alcohol, so it must have been really difficult for her to do it by herself. And another big point is that the way she was found in her shower, um, she was found in basically like a squatting, sitting position. A very unusual way when you kind of try to hang yourself and a very difficult position to do it in and that kind of that position would qu require a lot of force to do it and it would basically the force required to kind of do this thing would snap the shower head 
So yeah, the office didn't even look into how much force it, it would have been required for her to do that. Um, and it was basically impossible because the shower head would just simply snap. Experts said that there was no uh, signs of struggle or fight. They said that someone must have choked her out with like a pillow or something soft. Once the attacker thought that she was basically um, not alive anymore, he decided to stage the suicide. And when Carolina's body was um, unconscious, she was still alive, but she was unconscious. Uh, he dragged her into the bathroom, tying the wire around her neck and kind of just placing her in that position. That's when Carolina's like unconscious body basically choked her, her out and this is when she died. So the experts don't think that she did it herself. They think that she was unconscious and when she was put in that position, that's when um, the weight of her body basically suffocated her. So she could have still been um, alive when the attacker was bringing her to the bathroom. Also in the bathroom there was found uh, phones which were uh, unfortunately submerged and destroyed. Uh, they were submerged in the water and no information was possible to be taken from those phones. And the only witness of this whole thing going down was the poor dog that was with her all the time. The mother of Carolina is now taking care of the dog. However, the dog was kicked and was bruised up uh, for the next few weeks after the events. Um, the dog is now fine and it's with the mother. So now, if Carolina didn't do it herself and if it wasn't a suicide, who else could have done it? There's only two ways into that room. It's through the balcony and through the front door of, of the hotel room, basically. When Carolina was found, uh, the doors from the balcony were found open. And right after uh, Carolina's death, her apartment was looted for money and jewelry. So this is now all we know, uh, this is what happened. I'm gonna give you the common theories and my opinion now. If you guys like this kind of content, I have a whole playlist of uh, true crime from Poland. Uh, you can check that out. And if you would leave a subscribe and a like, that would be awesome. So guys, let me know what your theories are in the comments and we're gonna move on straight to the theories. So the first theory just basically says it was Camille P who actually did it. He was the one that last saw her and he was the one that was with her for the last time and uh, that she was seen. They also recently just broke up and one thing I don't understand why she would uh, be uh, in the hotel room with her ex when, when the once they broke up. I guess if they were still friends and kind of, she kind of invited him to her birthday. It's also known from Carolina's mother. She said that he would basically sneak into her balconies often into her apartment uh, when she didn't want to see him. It was also known that he would beat her as, as there were pictures found of her um, beaten by him basically. Uh, later on he was caught at the border in Szczecin um, when he was trying to cross the border to Germany. Apparently he was caught for um, another criminal offense that he did and not in the case of Carolina. So I think this theory has a lot of potential. You know, he was the last person that she was with. They had an argument just before he left. He was known to sneak into her balcony um, and as we know, they were both under drugs and alcohol influence and the room was also found with the balcony doors opened. It would kind of explain why he wasn't seen on the CCTV cameras as they get turned off at night. Um, that would give a lot information if they were on. He was known to be abusive, so maybe, so maybe it was him that did it. Anyways, we're moving to the second theory. This theory is uh, about a different boyfriend, uh, Rafael K. He in the beginning kind of helped her. Uh, get her career going, he got her contracts in London and so on. When their relationship kind of started to go bad, um, Carolina released a video basically of her when where she was talking to him and saying that he forced her to prostitution and that he was basically her pimp uh, in London. And it's known that Carolina was threatened by them releasing adult uh, videos of her to the press and to the family. And a few months after Carolina's death, uh, he actually hanged himself in a hotel in Wrocław. So yeah, that's the second theory. This could also possibly be someone that did it. I don't, I'm not sure why he hanged himself or what happened in his story. This kind of seems less likely to me as he wasn't there at that time with her. The first person that was with her was Camille and that kind of makes more sense to me. She wasn't really surrounded by good people, you know, um, 
both of the boyfriends were kind of abusive and this the, the first boyfriend was uh, forcing her to do such things which is horrible and she was already being threatened a long time before this happened and the last theory is that Carolina as well as Magdalena um, from the previous video they both fell into human trafficking this kind of goes deeper with like the prosecution's office and them not really doing their not doing the job looking into these cases it was also known that you guys remember Marcus from last video uh, the boyfriend of Magdalena Marcus was the hairdresser of Carolina so the prosecution's office denies that they were tied but we know that they were above going to the same clubs, they knew the same people. Um, Marcus was the boyfriend of Magdalena and the hairdresser of Carolina. Maybe that's somehow kind of connected, maybe it's not, maybe just, maybe it's just speculations. However, Marcus also denies that he knew Carolina when there's actually videos of him and her when he was cutting her hair. Um, I don't know why they would deny it when there's video proof and also the the manager of the club that they would also go together confirms that they know each other so i don't know what's going on there there's some kind of shady stuff um definitely so guys this was the story of carolina um these were the theories i think definitely maybe the first one or the third one uh, from the theories could be possible i don't think it's a suicide especially from the way she was found or maybe it was um we don't know but i I can definitely see some shady stuff kind of going on there. Um, and yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure to leave it a like and a subscribe. Um, I would greatly appreciate that. You can also check out the playlist, which is uh, down in the links. And yeah, let me know what you think about this case and what your theories are. And I'll see you guys in the next one.